<sighs> Prepare to die, little man. Funny you say little man. Huh? Where'd he go? Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Overview. Today, let's take a look at the Target exclusive Hasbro Marvel Legends Astonishing Ant-Man. Now, I have this on pre-order on Target.com. Like I said, this is Target exclusive. So, of course, I go to my local Target over the weekend, and boom, there it is, right there on the peg. And I'm like, hey, where's mine? I, I, I know I pre-ordered it. Some, I, whenever that was, a few months ago. So of course I grabbed it because one, is Target ever gonna ship my pre-order? And two, it's finally a classic looking Ant-Man. I know it's Astonishing Ant-Man, which means it's Scott Lang, but looking at the figure, at least the pictures on the package, I, this is probably gonna be my Hank Pym in my classic Avengers display. It just has that look. So classic-y. We're gonna do some comparisons and see if that's actually true. Looking at the package some more, I guess. There's a render of Ant-Man, and there's another render of Ant-Man. Another one on the back. Comes with a couple of hands. There is some comic art on the other side that I think is from Astonishing Ant-Man, which is a modern series, or at least a more recent series. I haven't read anything in a while. But riding by on a galloping horse, you would think, man, that's some classic Ant-Man artwork. Of course, as always, warning, choking hazard, small parts. Don't put the... the superhero that shrinks down to bite-size form in your mouth because well one twelfth scale whatever little cardboard splints to keep the legs straight Ooh, those are flexy and yep I like it. Now, before I get into this, remember that there has been quite a few Ant-Man figures. They haven't always been this design specifically, but <laughs> with Marvel Legends being reuse and everything, yeah, I'm bound to get something wrong, especially right here. The belt could be reused because it looks familiar. It's the same design as the retro carded release, but you can see a definite size difference. And yeah, if you missed a play day, I took the arms and jacket from a Mr. Fantastic and put it on that figure because of how skinny it was. Out of the package, it was essentially this design, just more stylized, I guess. Definite difference in the helmets. That belt is not glued down, and as I opened it, it was sitting low on the hips, but I like it when it's loose because I can move it up a little bit and give the character a whole different feel. In my mind, the higher the belt, the more classic-y it is, and then you get more modern, and the belt kind of drops. But that's a lot of personal preference. I just like the option being there. The body is reuse, and I usually call it the Sunfire body, but it's also been Spider-Man, it's been Speedball, it's been Falcon, it's probably been a few other characters too. It does have a slight oddballiness to the shape, like the shoulders sit slightly low, and then the legs kind of hump out here, get skinny here, and then duck feet out at the bottom. The shoulder's a little narrow, so when it gets down to the arm itself, that seems to bulge out too. At least from the side. When you get to the front, eh, not so bad. That sounds like I'm dogging on the body, but I'm not. It works in instances like this for a mid-sized character. But I do wish they would use the Falcon shoulders more. Those are a little bigger and seem to fill out the body better. See this gap right here going down to the shoulder? That's not there for Falcon. And it bulks out the body a bit better. Not a lot of paint here. There's a shiny black for the torso design coming back and around. And... I'm fighting the urge to dull coat it. Edges are fairly clean, at least as far as I can see, and then it's the same for this blue jagged line at the top of the glove. And then at the boot line, below is cast in blue, above is cast in red, so there's no trouble there. The capsules on the belt are a little messy, though. The silver's not quite covering the black. But the star of the show here, the whole reason to get another Ant-Man besides a bulkier body, is the head. Or, well, I guess I should say helmet with a face behind it. This just feels so classic with the softness, and I don't mean softness in a bad way, just the curves, because it's so retro feeling. Man, those look good. Just peering out from the smooth silver and then the lip color, I've been grappling about that a lot lately, and these don't look as dark as other figures we've seen. Kind of a natural feel, maybe because it's half covered up in a lot of angles. The antenna sticking up, those are soft. And out of the package, this one was kind of bent. I haven't done anything to it, and it's just kind of worked itself back up to being straight. Overall, it's just a good looking Ant-Man. Articulation wise, there is a ball going up in the head with a hinge going down into the neck. That allows for this, that, some tilt, a lot of left and right. Butterfly angled up, so in neutral position, you shift forward, it goes to there. 
but the more the figure reaches, the more it fits into that slot there. Way back. Pin out to the shoulder, rotates all the way around, and then hinges up to there. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. Oh most of the way. Swivel at the wrist with a hinge in and out. Crunchy at the midsection goes to there and then arcs back. Swivel at the waist hidden behind the belt so that's going to flex around a little bit whenever you do that. Ball coming out to the hip. Comes up. Back some. Out. Oh. <laughs> Better than most Spider-Mans. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh. Boom! Kicks his ant loving ass. Swivel at the mid thigh, or boot in this case. Hinge at the ankle goes well, all the way back. Forward, and then front facing pin for rocker. For accessories, out of the package, he has a right relaxed open hand and a left fist. Those are easy enough to pop right out. And with that, you can swap in a right fist and a left open relaxed hand. So there's two relaxed hands, two fists. And that's it, which is a shame because it's Ant-Man. It could have easily come with a small version of himself, give him some kind of representation of his power set. Ant-Man stands at about six and a quarter up to the top of the helmet, which is comparable to previous Ant-Mans. Thicker than this one, again, I threw that lab coat on there. And again, I get that they're calling this Lang, but this is my Scott Lang on the shelf. When I look up astonishing Ant-Man, this is the look on most of the covers. Plus, I like the design. You can still see that he's Ant-Man, but it's modernized. This, this has got to be my pimp. But if you're calling your Scott, here's how he compares to the Toy Biz version. Very, very, very nice upgrade. Just cuts a meaner silhouette. The articulation is better integrated into the overall form. And then the helmets. Scott, are you wearing your dad's helmet again? This, oh. <laughs> Couldn't ask for better, I don't think. Here he is with the Mafex Classic Iron Man and the Marvel Legends 20th Anniversary Captain America. Along with Marvel Legends 20th Anniversary Hulk and Thor from one of the anniversaries. I can't remember which. With a Rebel 10 Customs cape. And then here he is with the Retro Carded Wasp, which is okay. I like this costume, but it's not my favorite. And it's not the super classic old Avengers version. So... Yeah, I'd still like another wasp or two or three or four or five. She did come with this, so <laughs> I guess. So at the end of the day, like I said way at the first, I like it. I've been wanting this look for a long, long time. And as mentioned, there's been a lot of Ant-Man figures, but none of them captured that classic feel, that classic look. And it all came down to a belt and a helmet. Okay, mostly the helmet and some nice face printing tech, but it's Ant-Man. There is no denying it. Doesn't matter if you're using it as Scott Lang or Hank Pym. I think it works both ways. There's probably one tiny little thing that puts it firmly in one camp or the other, but uh, to me, I'm not getting that nitpicky. I like how this looks with the rest of the Avengers. Really what it's gonna come down to, I think, is whether or not you like this body type or whether or not you like exposed pins in the limbs. Me, I've said it many a time. I, I don't mind either way, especially on the male figures. It makes me no difference. They're toys. I can still see all the rest of the articulation, but I also don't mind pinless. So I'm not gonna say, oh, if they had made it pinless, I wouldn't have got it. No, I still would have bought it. I, I just have no strong feelings either way. Again, when it comes to male figures. On the females, that's the double elbows and the legs are more stable, especially when there's high heels involved. Much easier to stand up, or at least that's been my experience, but I can only talk about my own personal feelings and experiences. So there you go, Ant-Man. <laughs>